to be honest, I'm not much of a crier, but I've seen some really horrible things in my life. Take the infamous post-election violence in late 2007 and early 2008. It turns out that tears just aren't enough when we recall the ugly scenes that took place in that dark month. The things I saw, felt, and touched were pretty unspeakable. What I can tell you is this. The Rwandan genocide, the Holocaust, the Nigerian civil law, as well as the ongoing crisis in Syria, have been one of the world's greatest failures of simple compassion. The Oxford Dictionary defines the word compassion as a great feeling of sim sympathy for someone who's suffering and a great desire to help them. Which begs the questions, where was humanity when 45 million people were killed by a monumental famine in China between 1958 and 1962? Where were our parents when children were being molested by Catholic clerics in the 1990s? And why did we let our inaction create a fertile breeding ground for extremists in Syria? Now, in contrast, we have also witnessed some of the world's greatest successes of simple compassion. And that's, that's the fight against global poverty. I don't know if your first introduction to poverty was the coins that you donated when, the coins that you donated at, at a supermarket to help buy pads for young girls in remote parts of Kenya, or the race that you ran to save a child's heart, or even the gruesome images of starving children that you saw on television. My first introduction was at birth, being born to a lovely and beautiful single mom who tried to make ends meet. 35 years ago, they told us that 40,000 kids die every day because of poverty. That number today is down to 17,000. Way too many, of course. But that means that each, and every, each year, 8 million kids do not have to die because of poverty. And this makes me wonder, why haven't we all, uh, why haven't we completely eliminated poverty? Why are billions still stuck up in harsh poverty? Why do we have slums in countries such as Kenya, Brazil, Pakistan, just to name but a few. I think that the primary reason that Africa is still languishing in poverty is because our political leaders have made this choice. You know, from the Nigerian politicians who stole over $400 billion from the National Treasury, to the infamous uh, Congolese leader Mobutu Seseko, who reportedly embezzled $5 billion US dollars we see that politicians have contributed to a great deal of poverty. But I think there's another underlying reason that has undermined the global fight against poverty. And that, that's violence and lack of compassion for fellow human beings. Because it turns out that you can give all manner of goods and services to the poor, but if you do not restrain the hands of the violent bullies from taking it away, you will be disappointed by the long-term effects of your efforts. I know a 17-year-old girl called Belinda who was violently raped in Kibera two years ago. She loved going to school. But every time she steps out of their home now, she doesn't feel it's safe to do so. And that, that's why she doesn't go to school anymore. Yet education is the most powerful thing she can use to get her family out of poverty. And Belinda is not the only one. You know, around the world, thousands of young children and poor women are subjected to domestic violence and sexual abuse each and every single day. Experts tell us that 40 million people live in slavery today. That's the entire population of Kenya, the country that we're living in today. But, you know, decades of anti-poverty programs have not been able to rescue these millions from the torture and beatings they receive from their masters. In fact, those same programs have left more people in slavery than in any other time in human history. In South Asia, for instance, if you enslave a poor person, you are at a greater risk of being struck by lightning than going to jail for that crime. In Africa today, the largest employer on the continent are private security firms. But see, the rich can pay for the poor the rich can pay for safety and keep getting richer, but the poor cannot and keep getting thrown to the ground. 
and it doesn't have to be this way. You know, violence can be stopped. Almost all criminal justice systems can be transformed. Broken law enforcement can be fixed because the poor do not, exp the poor do not uh, experience violence simply because of lack of law, but its enforcement, because that's what it means to live outside the rule of law, and that's where billions of our world's poorest live. Because I usually wonder, when did we become a man-eat-man society to the extent that we do not care about others? Because violence descends like a plague in the lives of the poor and destroys everything they have. From the hindsight of history, what's always inexplicable are the failures of simple compassion. Because history convenes a tribunal of our grandchildren and they just ask, Grandpa, Grandma, where were you when Jews were fleeing Nazi Germany and were being rejected from our shores? And Grandma, where were you when we were beating our African-American brothers simply because they were trying to register to vote? Likewise, when our grandchildren ask, where were you when two billion of our world's poorest were living in lawless chaos of violence, I hope that we will say that we had compassion, that we stood up and we made a move to make the violence stop. Thank you.